guys, this is Grace and welcome to my channel. So today I am very excited because I was invited to join this YouTube blog hop with a few wonderful, sorry, creative scrapbookers here on YouTube. And um, the theme is that we are sharing multi-photo pages or multi, yeah, multi-photo layouts. And I am so excited about this because if you've been watching my channel for um, any period of time, you know that that's my jam. I love to do multi-photo pages. I also do single photo when I feel like it's warranted, but for the most part, I feel the more photos, especially if I'm doing an event, the better I will I will be able to tell the story. So let's just, let's blah, 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 blah. Let's just dive into all of the things that I'm planning on using for this layout. And yes, um, spoiler alert, it is a double page layout because again, that is kind of my jam. So um, I pulled out a few things from my stash. And as you can see, a lot of these are kind of just scraps or like leftovers and that's totally fine with me. I am doing a travel type um, layout. And so I decided to pull a lot of this travel theme. And this also happened to, um, in the summertime. And so I pulled out a bunch of summer themed uh, stickers as well. So these are just some of the um, stickers that I don't know if I'll be able to use, but I figured that I might use it. Now I pull these certain or these types of stickers because of like word strips, because I know that with multi-photo pages, it's hard sometimes to fit in embellishments or to put in products, but I always, almost always gravitate to small stickers or small embellishments because I know that I can tuck it in um, on top of photos, like when there's um, white space or things like that. So that's why I pull out these things. Now, do, am I going to be able to use al almost, I mean, all of these things? Uh, probably not. I'm probably only going to be using um, just maybe one fourth or maybe one eighth of the things that I pulled out, but I like to have variety. Now, this layout or rather my layout doesn't have any water in it, but I'm gravitating to this word summer. So I'm hoping to be able to use that up. And then just over here, I'm looking at Epic, Wild and Free, maybe part of my title. If you've been watching lately, you know that I like to kind of um, marry two different types of fonts for my titles. And so I'm going to kind of see if I can do that this time around. And here's a few more stickers. As you can see, a lot of them are simple stories. Chillin' Escape, I'm looking at that one and I'm really liking how that is. So we'll see which one I ended up using. And then I have a bunch of pattern papers here uh, that I am I pulled out. Um, they are different colors, um, but the reason why I pulled so many different colors is because my design plan for this layout is going to be, and I'm going to show you because I did some pre- prep work for the layout already and nothing is adhered actually but again this is going to be a double page layout and it's going to look something like this I don't know what my other I think my other photo was this one anyways as you can see I have a bunch of photos here I have a yellow cardstock base and then I grabbed some paper strips and this will be a good idea for if you are doing some or if you're using some scraps I think I'm using that photo instead and I have uh, I have 12 photos here and then 13 14 15 16 17 photos I am planning on matting my photos here with another pattern paper with just a subtle design just so that it will be um, um, kind of elevated from the pattern paper strips and I might tuck in an extra vellum in between there just to see if that looks better and makes it stand out. I did cut out these globes from a pattern paper from Pink Paisley. I believe that's one of um, Paige Evans' lines or collections and I did cut that out just because I felt like that fitted well with... Um, with my theme. So basically that's how it's going to look. I will be adding some banners here um, from the same pattern papers that I use for the strips over here. And I'm going to put that right there. Again, um, this is my way of incorporating products when I have a ton of photos is I either put them in small increments, like maybe cut out little pieces of it or put them in strips like over here in the background or like banners like this. So I know this is kind of looking a little busy, so I might 
maybe tone it down or maybe cut some of them up but i will show you how this layout comes together in the next video okay so now that i have adhered all of the photos uh it's basically time to do the finishing touches. So as you can see, I am using some scrap paper. And so this particular paper that I used as my matting for the photo block on the right side of my page had a circle on there. And so I needed to kind of secure the photos because the photos are just kind of, I don't know, they're, they weren't secured very well. So I'm just gonna grab some washi and make sure that I put that on the corners of that four uh, photos and then I can trim it knowing that that's secure over there. Now uh, I'm just going to trim it just a tad so that you you won't see too much of the print and then um, I, I will leave that top right side empty because that's where I'm going to be putting my journaling block and also my title. Like I said in the previous video, I was feeling like because the background had too many design on it, I felt like I needed to put a vellum just to go in between that matted photo block and then also the pattern paper. And so I have some 8.5 by 11 vellum and so that's what I'm going to do. But before that, I will be inking the edges of this. And I did ink up the edges of all of those paper strips with the same um, ink pad. So now that that's done, I am going to put that onto the vellum and that just gives that a little bit more, um, like it just makes it more better for the foreground and has that definition between that and the busy background. So like I said, this is part of a YouTube hop and so if you um, are so inclined, make sure that you check out the description below because it will have the links of all of the people that are participating in this specific hop. And I know that you will gain a lot of inspiration from all these people, especially if you are into multi-photo scrapbooking. So like I said before, I wanted to incorporate those pa pattern papers that I used on the right side onto the left, even though there's a lot of photos in there. And so for me to be able to do that, I've created some banners from that same, from the same papers that I used on the other side. And I cut that, I think I cut that about one inch width and then about one and a quarter inch um, length. And then I did uh, cut the bottoms in a fish tail so that it will have that banner look. And I adhered some twine behind it. I did add some fun foam to all of the backings of that, just so that it will um, have some lift before I adhere it on my photos. Now, you might be wondering or might be scared if um, these items that I'm using, adhesives that I'm using are archival free. Honestly, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, when I started scrapbooking, I was, very diligent and vigilant about making sure that everything is acid free but nowadays i don't know i just feel like um with the age of digital photography there's a lot of ways for me to preserve my photos other than my scrapbooking although i do like the you know way that it's printed and all that so um yeah i'm not too worried about that anymore before I was but speaking of photos um, I did feel like a lot of my videos lately are longer than what I'm normally doing and that's because I was able to finally figure out how to uh, secure or I have a new tripod system where I could put my big DSLR onto the wall and that's basically what i'm using to videotape all of my process videos nowadays and so it allows me to be able to continue videotaping without having to stop too many times and that's what i was doing with my phone and that's why my videos were a little bit shorter now it's longer but the problem that i'm having now is that because it is longer I am not used to talking for 15 minutes straight versus before it was like five, six minutes. And so I decided that because my videos are longer, I'm going to take this time to maybe answer some of the questions that I've 
had here on YouTube and yeah kind of fill up that, uh, that space and so one of the questions that I've been getting a lot is that how do I print my photos and to kind of preface what I'm going to say is I'm going to tell you right now that I will be doing I will try to do a video all about how I print my photos because I feel like it's hard for me to talk about it without showing you how I do it so that's in the queue for the videos that I want to do it's just honestly you know there's just not enough time in the day we all have 24 hours and sad for me I can't use all those 24 hours to scrapbook even if I wanted to anyways um, the gist of what I how I'm going to answer it is that three things first of all is that, um, so one of my side hustles is that I'm a professional photographer I do portrait photography and so um, I do have a monthly subscription to Photoshop or I should, I should say monthly subscription to Adobe so I have Photoshop 2020 and I also have Lightroom and so my photos do go through some kind of post processing not a whole lot versus you know the ones that I give to my clients but I do some post processing on my photos so all of them gets uh, a little bit of editing here and there and then about three years ago I was printing all my photos as 4 by 6 because I felt like that was just so much easier for me and so um, but the problem that I found there was that they were just too big it was harder for me to crop things and so for the last three years I have almost all of my photos as 3 by 4 and that goes through some kind of cropping so that I can put them in a 4 by 6 format again I can't really explain this without showing you but needless to say I put them in Photoshop so I can put them as 3x4s and then print them as 4x6 and then I just print them off of Shutterfly. Uh, no fa nothing fancy, I just, I think, I, I like the quality of Shutterfly, well it's cheap for one thing and then the second thing is I'm not too worried about the quality because I feel like I do some editing on there anyways so um the the printing for me is okay you know i mean of course it's not the best quality um i go through a professional printer for my clients images so i can tell the difference but for scrapbooking especially if it's a three by four image i'm not too worried about it okay so that is like the kind of shorter version of how I print my photos. So let's go back to the layout here. So now I'm just basically decorating. I did use some word strips. Uh, I love word strips. They're just very fun to add to photos, especially photos like this or layouts like this that have a lot of photos. Um, I can tuck in words here and there. I will add this label and that will. that's where I'm gonna house my um, journaling and then other than that that's pretty much it I think I will add a few more enamel dots maybe um, but other than that this layout is done I hope that you guys like these videos if you do please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing and if you're new to my channel thank you so much for coming along and I hope that you guys stay and I have some mini series in my channel and they're all in a playlist so make sure that you check that out I do create a mini series every other month well I'm trying to this year but I have an uh, archived mini series playlist on my YouTube channel if you would like to see more of my style of scrapbooking if you have any questions make sure that you leave it in the comment section below again make sure that you check out all of the other scrapbookers that are joining in with this blog hop and i will catch you guys another day have a great day bye